Greetings everyone and welcome back to Inside EVs. My name is Andre, I'm one of Inside EVs European editors and behind me is the electric car that Kia wanted to sell in the US but then decided against it, probably thinking that the EV6 would, um, it would fill the niche in its range. I am of course talking about the Kia Soul EV, at least that's what it would have been called in the United States. Here in Europe we call it the eSoul. I recently drove the Kia EV6 and I was expecting that to be awesome and it really really was. Very few things to, to fault about it. But the Soul, the eSoul, is absolutely phenomenal. It took me by surprise and I absolutely love it. And I think that if I were to choose between these two new electric Kias, I think this boxy thing behind me would be the vehicle I would spend my money on. And I'll try to explain why. So this is the third generation Kia Soul and the second electric version of it. Interestingly, in Europe, Kia chose to only offer it as the all-electric eSoul and it essentially shares its platform, motor, battery, controllers and much of the tech with the Hyundai Kona for instance. It is slightly smaller than Kia's own e-Nero or Nero EV which has proven remarkably popular all around the world but I would actually take this over the Nero even with its poor aerodynamics and boxy looks. This by the way has a drag coefficient of 0.35 and you can see why with this very bluff front end. But in my book it's not unattractive. You get these very slim headlights. My tester is a fully specced top of the range model so these are actually the headlights. This is the indicator and these are the fog lights. In lesser models, this is where the headlights are and this is where the daytime running lights are. My tester also has the SUV appearance pack, which I'm not a big fan of. It gives you this silver trim as well as this cladding, the silver thing along the bottom, this cladding and the silver thing in the rear. And I'm not a big fan of these. I think the sole looks much, much better without them. In Europe, you can only get it with these 17 inch rims, which are interesting. They look like um, flat shaded polygons, I guess. If you're into 3D modeling, you know what I'm talking about. And they are not bad, but from a distance, I noticed that, well, they look uh, like they are either dirty or damaged. <laughs> I don't know. This is where the charge port is. You get the standard European CCS connector. So the Type 2 and the, the DC part. The Soul EV can charge at up to 77 kilowatts and that should bring the battery up to 80% in just over 50 minutes. If you charge it from a 50 kilowatt charger like the one that I used then you're probably looking at 75 minutes to 80% still pretty good. So the battery pack in my tester is the larger one available for the Soul EV. The 64 kilowatt hour pack and it gives this car a claimed WLTP range of 452 kilometers. There's also a smaller 39 kilowatt hour battery pack, but that only offers 276 kilometers of range. And it also comes with a weaker motor that only produces 100 kilowatts or 136-ish horsepower. Although it makes the same 395 newton meters of torque as this more powerful 150 kilowatt or 201 horsepower top of the range model. And even though it only sprints to 100 kilometers per hour or 62 miles per hour in just under eight seconds it really feels brisk I mean I'm impressed if you watched my EV6 review in that video I said that I was expecting it to feel quicker well I was expecting the soul the e soul to feel slower but it feels quicker so kudos to Kia so I raised the hood in the meantime just to give you a look at what's under here I guess Kia could have used as you can see there's a little bit of space on top of this um, plastic cover thing and they could have used it for storage, but they didn't. But it's not a tragedy. Although with the small trunk that this car has, maybe it is. It has gas struts that hold it up. Nice premium touch. Sounds really good when you close it. Sounds very uh, solid. Let me show you the trunk real quick. So storage in the rear is actually quite poor, to be honest. 
it is not this car's forte. So down there is a 310 liter trunk that has a fairly small opening, surprisingly. <laughs> and the lip you have to load stuff over is, um, it's quite high, to be honest. There's also some underfloor storage here for charging stuff and a 12 volt, what is it? 180 watt cigarette lighter and the subwoofer from the optional Harman Kardon sound system. There is no option for an electric hatch, so you have to pull it down manually. All ESOLs, you won't see the E written on it. You will be able to tell this one apart from gas burning examples, although in Europe you won't be able to see any gas burning examples, but you will be able to tell them apart by this red script. And this will drive the point home that this is indeed an electric soul. I will point out the one big change that Kia made to the Soul with this generation is that it gave it independent rear suspension, a multi-link setup that makes this car unbelievably comfortable, remarkably comfortable and fun to drive. Let's hop in the back. So as you can see, the floor is quite flat. There's only a small tunnel. In the E-Nero, you have quite a bit more space. Not sure if you can see down there, but it's actually pretty good. I can slide my feet underneath the front seat. And now that I've made the, the mats dirty, you can see they are special custom mats for the EV version of the Soul. And you get these little battery motifs and this plug here. Only the passenger seat gets a, one of these pockets. Oh yeah, and because this is the top of the range model, ah, it's turned off, but you have heated seats in the rear as well. The direction where you have the most space in a Kia Soul is above you. I like this, it's very interesting. But in the front, you actually have embedded mood lighting that actually lights up according to the music. So it lights up to the beat. Unlike in some other EVs, you don't feel like your knees are pushed very, very high. This car has keyless entry and go. So in the front, you might be discouraged at first sight, but the more time you spend in here, the more you start to appreciate this interior, to be perfectly honest. So again, the really cool mats. I really, I love these mats. They are awesome. So from the driver's perspective, I will immediately point out that the steering wheel is actually unique to the sole. You get pedals for regen. We'll talk about these uh, when I drive the vehicle physical buttons here and here. I didn't find these as easy to get used to as in some other cars, but they're not bad. The instrument cluster is comprised of a central screen with more traditional LCD screens on the, on the sides. And in the center, you can scroll through various screens. For instance, you can see the average electricity consumption in this vehicle and the outside temperature, one degree Celsius. I think I reset it. This is my actual consumption. I never tried to drive it uh, efficiently. I mostly kept it in sport mode because it is a hoot to drive. So there's definitely a bit of mini inspiration in this uh, central binnacle thing. The infotainment is awesome. No criticism really for it. Although sometimes it, um, it is not as responsive as the best screens on the market, but I'm nitpicking. It's a very, very, very good system. I don't have anything to say bad about it. Below it, you have shortcuts. Below it, you have the single zone climate control. This vehicle also has a heat pump as standard. And you can, just like in the EV6, set the climate to only blow air on the driver. I don't think this car needs more than one zone because it actually heats up the interior quite quickly, to be honest. The heat pump is standard, as I said. And if you disable it, let's see. Range increases by four kilometers. Although the difference might actually be bigger than that if you drive it for more with the, the heat pump off. You get a similar selector to the one in the EV6, although it's not identical. You get cooled and heated seats in the front. This is where you change the drive mode. So you have Eco, Normal and Sport. And if you keep it pressed, it goes into Eco Plus. And it says that some of the functions such as climate and speed nah, 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 may be limited. My tester also has the optional heated steering wheel. I will point out that the driving position, even though it's 
quite high. It's uh, not obnoxiously high. I mean, I don't like driving positions that are um, too high and you feel like you're sitting on the car instead of in it. But the e-sole is kind of in between. It is a high driving position because it is quite a high vehicle with like 15 centimeters of ground clearance and this tall body. So there's room to crank your seat up and some people like to see the, where the car ends. The steering wheel feels nice. The driving position overall is very comfortable. I'm, I'm impressed. I'm a fan. It's a very good driving position, especially for a crossover. And I like it more than the EV6's driving position because the EV6 is a lower sportier type vehicle but the driving position isn't any lower than in this so it's a bit of a, a letdown I guess. So the final price before any uh, incentives or any deductions are applied is 50,000 437 euros. So the color is called Neptune Blue, the interior upholstery is Saturn Black, and let me see what the base price is. So the premium trim level, like my tester, starts at 43,000 VAT included, and with Kia's own 26, Kia Romania's own 2600 euro discount, and the scrappage scheme that the Romanian government has going on, you can get it down to 30,500 euros. The price that I mentioned for my tester does not include um, the incentives. So from the 50,437, you actually would end up paying minus around 13,000. So I guess 37-ish thousand euros, which is pretty good for um, a vehicle with quite a few options. The only thing that it's lacking is the, um, the panoramic sunroof, but really other than that, it has everything, even the, the head-up display, the optional safety systems with blind spot collision avoidance assist, which also gives you a rear cross-traffic avoidance. That's pretty good. I will say that one of the omissions in this vehicle is an around-view camera system. Okay, I think we can drive the car now. So this paved lot where I usually shoot my uh, reviews is actually quite bumpy and I've started to know which cars are comfortable just based on how they ride here and the Soul EV is uh, very very good in this respect. At lower speeds I have to say that the e Soul is actually very very quiet too and I like the fact that you can actually hear the electric motor much more so than in some other electric vehicles. Like for instance, if you're in sport mode and you floor it, you will actually hear the motor whine and chirp the tires a little bit. Wee. This feels like a normal car and it is a normal car. It's a normal internal combustion engine car turned EV. And one of the EV things it does really well is brake regen. Just like in the EV6, you have paddle behind the wheel. If you pull on the left one three times, it puts you in max regen mode, so when you lift off, like I am now, the vehicle will slow down, quite noticeably. But if you bring it up back to speed, release, and then if you pull on the paddle, the vehicle will actually slow down even more, and it will come to a complete halt without me touching the brake. The EV6 does that when you put it in eye pedal mode, but in the e Soul, you have to keep the left paddle pulled I have not tried this solution in any other vehicle, but I have to say that after driving the e Soul for a few days, I've already gotten used to it. And when I know I can use it, I use it instead of the physical friction brakes. And that's a plus because I usually don't like one pedal driving. But in the two Kias, the two electric Kias that I've driven, it has proven surprisingly, surprisingly well judged and usable, even for someone who doesn't like such systems usually. Around corners, you will be surprised to find out that the e Soul is much more fun than something this shape would have any right to be. Let's try a launch. You can do a really, really, really impressive burnout in one of these. And you will leave a trail of smoke behind you. The acceleration is really good. Okay, so I think we can do a proper launch now. Disabled traction, left on the brake. Yeah, that was smoke. You know, the instant torque. It's awesome. 
We're merging onto the highway now. This vehicle has a limited top speed of 167 kilometers per hour. And as you may notice, let me increase the speed a little bit more. As speed builds, this car's uh, poor aerodynamics begin to uh, make their presence felt even more. It's not the most refined at speed, but the trade-off is, you know, you can wear any type of hat you want in this vehicle. Let's see this high-speed corner. So we're doing 100 kilometers per hour, and the car isn't even leaning that much. It's great. It's much better than you expected. The handling, for me, is the highlight. And the look. I actually like the look. Although I wouldn't keep the 15 centimeter ground clearance, I would slam it and change the wheels. But I wouldn't do anything else to this vehicle. It's pretty great out of the box. It's a pretty great box, I mean. Great box, very lovable box. So in terms of its range, it's not as good as the EV6. And in most respects, it's not as good as the EV6. But you get it quite a bit cheaper. So this vehicle, if you were to buy it today in Romania, it would be around 37,000 euros. That is a fair bit of change. It's um, not that expensive compared to other electric vehicles. And considering what you're getting here, which is a long-range electric vehicle that you can even take on road trips. And I think a road trip in this would be very, very fun. No, it's good. It's an impressive EV. And speaking of road trips, when I picked this car up from Kia, it was fully charged to 100%. And it still estimated over 350 kilometers, even though it was, uh, the temperature was similar to the day, 1-2 degrees Celsius above freezing. That's really impressive. The EV6 had a similar range when I picked it up with its full battery. And this is cheaper and simpler and more conventional a car. So anyway, the eSoul is actually a remarkable electric car. Maybe Kia will reconsider selling it in the US when uh, the chip shortage and the lithium shortage and all other shortages and the pandemic end. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like it and subscribe to the Inside EVs YouTube channel if you have not done so already. And we will see you in the next one. Take care.